So today we're going to talk about intertextuality. Does that sound good for everyone? No! no. Shut up, Becky! Don't mind her. So, intertextuality can be described as work that is referring to other works. It can, for example, be quotations or references from other texts or works. Every work is inspired by another work, and that is why no text or work is unique. Did you hear that, Becky? Yes. So now we're going to watch some amazing clips of these young people that did an amazing job with defining what intertextuality is. Okay? Great. Let's begin. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I have magic dwarves and mystical creatures. Oh, I have that too. Okay, well, do you have an old wizard with a white beard who helps the main character? Oh, you're talking about Dumbledore? Yeah, he's great. No, I'm talking about Gandalf. <laughs> okay, well, uh, do you have dangerous objects that you need to destroy that makes you go crazy? Oh, Horcruxes? Yeah. No, the One Ring! But why are you mimicking me? I'm not! But wait, okay, what if I say two inseparable relatives that act all goofy? Mary Pippin. No! Fred and George! Why are you taking everything from me? Why are you, you taking, taking everything, everything from, from me? me? <laughs> oh, Rose, my one true love. Uh, excuse me, sir. Why are you carving mine and Juliet's name? Your name? This is mine and Rose's. Who is Rose? She's the woman I can never have. We are star star-crossed lovers. Oh, I also have an unreachable woman. Man, we're in the same boat. Oh no, my boat sank. And I'm dying for my love on the wreckage. Oh, me too. I poisoned myself. Wait, quick question. If you think about the most iconic love scene, what do you see? Oh, that's easy. It's my balcony scene with Juliet. No, no, no. It's definitely my flying scene. Well, we all know that I'm the perfect gentleman. Well, please, did you even watch my movie? What are Wait, you doing here? here? I'm, I'm chasing, chasing the, the white, white rabbit. rabbit. What's going on? I'm entering a new unknown world. So am I, but can you get out? Yeah. Yeah, me too. What have you been doing down here in this alternate uh, world? I've been taking some pills. This one does one thing, and this one does it. the exact opposite. What have you been do doing here? I've been eating strange food, mushrooms and cake. This one does one thing, and this one does the exact opposite. Hmm, that sounds strange for me. Okay, so we're sitting here with the Wachowski brothers, the directors of the Matrix trilogy, and they have uh, some comments for us on the matter of Alice in Wonderland in The Matrix. So, what do you have to say about this connection? Well, no, no, it's uh, true. Uh, we, uh, Alice in Wonderland is a uh, like, running theme in The Matrix tr trilogy. Yeah, yeah. So, even though The Matrix is thought of as a, a really abstract and one-of-a-kind, we can't actually say that it's unique. <clears throat> um, yeah, because there is a Alice in Wonderland in every movie, all of the films. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Wachowski Brothers. Yeah, thank, thank you. you, thank you. <laughs> Sorry guys, sorry. So, so now when you've seen these amazing clips of what intertextuality is, does someone here want to define or tell me your own explanation of it? Yes, Graham Allen. Yeah, okay, so I just, I just took this down in class and I think intertextuality seems such a useful term because it foregrounds notions of relationality interconnectedness and interdependence in modern cultural life. In the postmodern epoch, theories often claim it's not possible any longer to speak of originality or the uniqueness 
of the artistic object, be it a painting or novel, since every artist's object is clearly assembled from bits and pieces of already existent art. Graham Allen out. Boom! Wow.